not including the fact that the first 20 seconds of these films are literally the same exact movie, I wanted to showcase some other similarities between Star Wars A New Hope and The Force Awakens. In the beginning, a rebel slash resistance member has the secret message that the bad guys are after and gives it to a droid. Then the stormtroopers do a drive-by on foot and whoever said stormtroopers had horrible aim, exhibit A, because they've obviously been practicing. The dark black guy that's in charge of all the white guys, which is reverse racism when you really think about it, asks for the secret message the rebel slash resistance character gave to the android. When he doesn't want to cooperate, the bad guy takes his life away. Next, the bad guy questions the one good guy, even after seeing all the dead bodies all over the place. When the one good guy is questioned, he or she starts talking trash like it's a game. After they take the good guy person prisoner on the bad guy ship, the bad guy finds a way to have the prisoner answer every question he asks. It barely even matters because all the answer he or she does tell the bad guy have no bearing on the plot whatsoever, so it's whatever. Eventually, a stormtrooper saves the day and rescues the prisoner and causes some internal issues amongst the bad guys. They start fighting with each other instead of focusing all their energy on the good guys at this point. Meanwhile, the main character of the movie is on this Mad Max Fury Road looking planet. Both main characters in both films share a lot of similarities. They both don't have daddy issues because ironically, they both don't have daddies. And during a scene later in the movie when someone takes Anakin Skywalker's lightsaber out of a chest, we get hints of who their dads are, but instead we have to wait to hear the final verdict on the next episode. Another thing they have in common is when they hear the voice that tells them to use the force, use the force, Luke. The force. they take a deep breath, close their eyes, and a slowed down version of the binary sunset John Williams song plays when they get the hang of using the force in the actual battle for the first time. That means something. It has to. I don't know. But anyways, back to the Mad Max Fury Road planet, the joy gets kidnapped by a scavenger and the main character and the joy cross paths after that. They instantly become friends after the main character repairs the damaged droid. When the daddyless kid reads the blue hologram message inside the robot, he or she gets happy as hell because he or she gets to go on an adventure. If you're going on an adventure in a J.J. Abrams movie, spaceships have to be involved. It's like an unwritten rule or something, so they find a spaceship. The main character thinks the spaceship is trash. What a piece of junk. Which is the dumbest thing I've ever heard because everybody knows that the Millennium Falcon is the only ship to ever make the Kessel run in 14 parsecs. 12. Whatever. Later on, there's a part where the good guys are on the Millennium Falcon and a bigger ship takes the controls. After that, Han Solo comes up with a great idea to hide the crew underneath the floorboards, which is the third place I would look actually, but it works for some reason. The action picks up after the cantina bar scene. When Han and company leave the bar, the bad guys use their secret weapon. Their secret weapon is, and I quote, an armored space station with enough power to destroy an entire planet another Death Star. At the base, the team looks at the PowerPoint presentations to find any weaknesses for the Death Star. The pilots start gearing up, and you get a feeling like it's going to be one of those trips where everybody doesn't make it back alive, like on Independence Day or something. One thing I learned from watching these movies, never ever hug a Skywalker before an aerial battle. Spoiler alert, you're probably going to die. There's a part in the movie where the old guy is creeping around the bad guy's headquarters, and the bad guy senses him. I sense something, a presence I've not felt since... Hot when they finally meet face to face, they exchange some words and only the one with the red lightsaber makes it out alive. Loved ones scream no like this and start shooting up the place. During an aerial battle, the squadron makes it through one of the trenches and skim the surface to an opening that's no bigger than two meters wide. Then co the good guys win and it has nothing to do with the four strength and numbers, dark side or the light. It's simply because the bad guys suck at delegating and instead of trusting the stormtroopers, who for the most part had it covered, the Sith is always finding excuses to get it done themselves, which never works. The Millennium Falcon and the squadron pilots fly back to the base. Everyone cheers and celebrates all the heroes, except for Chewbacca. They treat Chewbacca like Kaka and ignore him. No thank yous, no medals, no nothing. Nothing to see here, folks. Those are 30 reasons these movies are the same. You agree? Yes, no, maybe so? If not, politely share your thoughts in the comment section below and click the subscribe button for more 24 Reason videos. <gasps>